They want me to spend thousands to live off grid. It's been a while since I've taken you down here. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've brought you down to this area since the first or second day I was here. When we bought this property, this used to be, well, it still is, a huge junkyard of just garbage. I don't know, can you see that? It's uh, old freezers and refrigerators and just junk. I don't know if you can see all that, but there's an, something over there. I've gotten a lot of this cleaned up, believe it or not. It used to be all piled up over there. This is down in the woods in the creek. It's just somebody's junkyard of garbage. This job would be a lot easier if it wasn't in the woods, but I gotta try to dig it out from all the trees and the stuff. I don't know if I'll ever get it all cleaned up, but I try. <laughs> Take it over and get it uh, recycled. I tried to get a guy to come out here and do it. I said, you could have all the metal and out of it and he said no he didn't want to deal with it out in the woods so okay a while ago i made a video and i was trying to explain how convenient it is to live off grid i was telling you that our chickens got killed by a dog now originally i thought it was a coyote i guess i need to clarify that because you don't watch all the videos you won't know somebody chewed me out i thought you said your dogs killed your chickens because in another video it was older than that one he I said coyotes so originally we thought it was coyotes and found out it was a dog there's a group on Facebook that live around here and somebody else said that they're five chickens all their that's all they had was killed by the same dog so I would imagine that dog doesn't have a lot longer to live a lot of people were upset about that dog so in one of the videos I'd made so I got I don't know dozens or hundreds of comments telling me to spend money and i calculated all the money people wanted me to spend and it totaled about a hundred thousand dollars of different things i needed to do to keep the chickens safe we lost nine chickens still have 17 calculated how many of those nine chickens would have produced throughout their lifespan they only had about a little year left to live and it came up to 550 dollars so I'm supposed to spend $100,000 to protect 550. I guess that people just cannot fathom living without spending money. It's just a mindset that if you're going to do anything, you got to spend money. It's just the way it works. And I can't convince people that you can live without spending any money. It is completely possible. People will argue, oh no, I couldn't live like that. I need entertainment. I need this. I need that. Then I think maybe your criteria for life is way too high. To me, and I understand that I'm a little bit strange, I don't need people in my life. Me and Carolyn make a perfect couple. We're happy. And we can live right here on this property and always be happy. We don't have to spend money to be happy. The other thing is that spending money can become an addiction. You get a feel good when you spend money. And I think Carolyn and I have learned how to feel good just living here, you know, coming out here. We still get excited when we get eggs. Recently, our chickens went in a molt. That was the nine chickens that died. They were the older. And our new chickens hadn't started producing yet. So our egg production went way down. Well, then we lost the nine chickens, and we were really disappointed. We didn't think we'd get many eggs throughout the winter. We didn't know if the new chickens would start producing before winter or not. If they'll produce now, they'll produce all winter because we got the Brahmas. Well, sure enough, we're getting about six eggs a day, so they're starting to produce. That's really good news. So we come out here, we're all excited. We still get excited picking up eggs after all this time. Where'd you find it at? Well, this one was out in the yard. Or no, that one was over there in the nesting box. So it's still fun. Life can be fun without having to spend money. But it is an addiction. Always buying that new thing, always going to Amazon and wait for that package to arrive. It's very exciting. I get it. But I think it's to fill a void of loneliness, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but I do know that there is a void trying to be filled by spending money. And so everything is about spending money. It's, it's not even a consideration on how to do it without spending money. 
So I made that video and I went through all the things that people wanted me to buy. You know, a big fence to go around the property, six foot chain link fence. I don't remember what it was, but I don't know, 20,000 maybe, something like that. It was crazy for to, to do the whole property. Electric fence, security cameras. So I said, why do I need any of that? I can have a 22 bullet, that costs six to 10 cents, that's not much. And I had this piece of metal for that cost me $10 which was what I had on it originally. This had windows on it. So I just took that piece of metal and covered up the windows. So it was very cheap versus the $100,000. And I don't think anything's gonna get in that. And then of course people say, well, you gotta redo your chicken run. Well, I don't know why I gotta redo my chicken run. The chicken run's doing fine. Nothing's gotten into the chicken run. So why am I redoing it? But it's always about spending money, always about doing more, doing more for a $500 investment, $550. But every time I make a video where I tell you I don't spend money, the thought process just cannot kick in with my viewers. And so in the video, I was talking about solar panels and my refrigerator and generators. So the only real energy user we have is our refrigerator and it keeps our meat frozen. We don't have to use it. If something were to happen, SHTF, you know, stuff hits the fan, we would shut the refrigerator off, just can all our food. I got a turkey up there right now, bought it right after Thanksgiving. Prices dropped a little bit on it, so we bought that, I don't know, 20, 25 pound turkey. And we'll boil that up and we'll can it, trying to save money. So somebody asked the question, how much of our meat do we can? And I would say about 99% of the meat we have is canned. But the refrigerator runs off solar panels. Now in the summertime, I never had to start the generator this last summer not once to charge the batteries the solar panels kept up with everything we had now i am still trying to figure out the winter usage in the winter you can see right now it's pretty cloudy and i'm gonna have to run the generator at night i don't have a choice to charge the batteries so i'm still trying to figure that out but we've gotten a lot better last time i bought gas for the generator was in september it's december now so we don't use it that much We've reduced the amount of gas we've had to use since last year because last year I was using the same amount of gas in about a month. So doing a lot better, but every year we get a little better and have to spend less money on our electric cost. Well, somebody said, well, here's what you need to do is get yourself a propane refrigerator. Now, for those who don't know what that is, if you buy an RV, you can get a refrigerator that runs off propane, AC electric, or DC electric, three-way refrigerator. Now, people are gonna argue with me. I can't help that, but I trust my father. My father has owned two of them. And he said that the propane, when it's on propane, refrigerator only reduces the temperature in the refrigerator like 20 degrees below what it is outside. So if it's 90 degrees outside, then it's gonna be 70 degrees in the refrigerator, something like that, don't quote me on the specifics. So you gotta run your air conditioner also. So you're running your air conditioner in your RV to drop the temperature down to about 70 degrees. That way the temperature in your refrigerator gets down to 50 degrees. So with that knowledge, I've just never been a big fan of them. I trust my father much more than I would trust any commenter. I hate to say it, but that's just the way it is. So I've never even chosen to get one. So this guy said I should get one, the, the, a propane refrigerator. And he said propane's not that expensive. But I don't understand why I would get one. Basically, in the summertime, my electric is free. I have no cost. I just went and got gas. So it cost me $28 to get gas for the generator. That's going to last me three months. So the cost is very minimal. I just Googled how much does it cost to run a propane refrigerator. And prices vary. But based on what I could find, it was about 60 cents a day. And a 20 pound tank would last you about 11 and a half days. In my mind, that's very expensive. I go to get propane tank filled, it's $12, but I get a military discount. I think it's about $15 a tank normally. So every 11 days, you're spending $15. So in 22 days, you just spent $30, which is more than what I spend on my generator in three months. So it doesn't make any sense why I would switch over to a propane refrigerator when basically my electric's free. But I don't understand why folks will 
seem to find the more expensive option every time there's a problem. And I say this a lot, and I don't think anybody really hears me say it. I am not going to spend a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or a thousand dollars on a five dollar problem. Same with the chickens. If you remember, I said, I'm not gonna spend a hundred thousand dollars for a $550 problem. When all I really needed to do was spend $10 for a piece of metal. There's something I wanna say that I know very few people are gonna believe. But Carolyn and I truly do believe we could live here without spending any money. We do spend money just to flavor our life a little, just a little. We spend about $200 a month on groceries. Most people will spend $200 to $400 a week on groceries. But we have learned how to minimize what we need. Again, food is an addiction. Spending money and food are both addictions. So when you go to the grocery store, you get a double whammy of feel good. We buy meat. Meat is not addictive. Sugar is, carbohydrates is. So buying bread is addictive. Buying noodles is addictive. Buying meat is not. So we're carnivores, so we're not addicted to sugars anymore. As a matter of fact, I used to tell you, Carolyn and I go to Dollar General every Friday to buy these little, I don't even know if they're a pint of ice cream, maybe a half pint. And then we also buy pistachio nuts. And we were talking the other day how the ice cream just isn't really all that appealing anymore. We used to get pretty excited about Fridays because of the ice cream. But now we've gotten off our sugar addiction we're not even excited about the ice cream. We're excited about living here, maybe getting some pistachio nuts, but we know how to feed our chickens from our own property. And we've told you about that, sunflower seeds and eating the weeds around here. So we don't have to spend money on the chickens. The chickens feed us. We've got everything we need. We've got electric. I can run the well pump off the solar panels or I get a hand pump and I can pump the water. So I don't need anything anymore or it takes money. Now somebody's gonna say, well, you still gotta pay taxes. Agreed, I gotta pay my property taxes. Uh, $41 is what I paid this year for my property. And if you really think about it, I could sell that much in eggs each year pretty easily. It doesn't have to cost to be happy, I promise. So if you'll click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was talking about a judge ruled can't live in a tiny house. So I hope I can inspire you to be happy without money. Thanks for watching.